Ladies and gentlemen, a, uh, a warm welcome to this um, From Vision Zero <laughs> to Reality process. Actually, I was just told this is like speed dating. So they are pretty brutal on the timeline. Um, so apparently this feels like we really have to turn men into machines to make this, uh, to make this all work. Now, why does, it, um, why does it matter? Why does it matter to NXP? Why do we speak about this? Um, NXP is the global number one chip company to the automotive industry. So there is no other semiconductor company shipping more semiconductors, more innovation into that fast-moving industry than NXP. This is why we think we have a big obligation, actually, to deliver on the promise of turning Vision Zero into reality. The starting point for the whole discussion is, unfortunately, a sad fact. And the sad fact is, there is still 1.3 million road fatalities every year globally. 1.3 million people being killed in traffic accidents. And the underlying truth is that 99% of those traffic accidents are due to human error. So it's not bad coincidences, it's not bad weather, but it's actually human beings making mistakes, which is pretty human, actually. But this is what we need to work on. Now, Vision Zero is something which started in Sweden many years ago as a, I think, very noble vision, a vision to get traffic accidents to zero in order to stop killing people in something which we actually love, which is cars. Now, the vision in those days was very much about concrete and steel, about building roads differently, about pillars, about infrastructure. We think today is the, the day that actually we can do this through electronics, which is so much smarter, which is so much more precise. And actually, I also think it is much cheaper doing it that way than trying it by than trying to do it by building different roads and different um, traffic lights. So this is where it all starts. Use electronics, use the power of electronics together with semiconductors to turn that vision zero into reality going forward. So it starts with enabling self-driving cars. It actually starts with the idea of making a car sense its environment more accurately, faster, and better than human beings can do that. Such that the car can take action afterwards, which is also faster, more accurate, than the human being can do it. This is the whole idea. Actually, turning the car into a robot of wheels, which is more precise than we human beings can do it. Now, the way to do this is all about sensing, thinking, and acting. In semiconductor terms, this is about all sorts of environment sensors, enormous processing power with artificial intelligence, and quick electronic actuation. Now, let me go through those. In the sensing space, I will give you a couple of examples where the industry, where NXP is today, relative to the performance which is available right here right today to be better than human beings. On the thinking side, this is all about artificial intelligence and enormous processing power. Many, many teraflops, very high bandwidth communication inside the car in order to do actually what our brain is currently doing when we are driving a car. Now, there is one element many people unfortunately forget to speak about, which is cybersecurity. When you think about the sensing side of the system, then you understand that there's a lot of external input. Again, in electronics language, we, we speak about all sorts of RF going into the car, connecting the car with its environment, which is an open door, potentially, to hacking. This is why, with the rise of connected, with the rise of autonomous cars, the cybersecurity side of the game becomes hugely important. We are absolutely convinced there will never be fully connected cars, there will be never autonomous cars, unless 
there is a very, very advanced cybersecurity system in place. And I mean, you all remember the hacked cheeps from Charlie Miller a few years ago. And this is only getting more exposed the more the car is going to be connected. So we talk about a system which senses, which processes, and which actuates. Now, let me give you a couple of examples on how we think about sensing and how far we are in the industry in actually realizing this. The first one, much talked about for many years, is the, the V2X, the idea of connecting vehicles to other vehicles, to infrastructure, eventually also to people. This is a very powerful technology because it will let the car see more than you as a human being can ever see. What I mean with that is it is actually superior to radar or camera systems because the car, through connectivity to other cars, will be able to see over a hill. It will be able to see around the corner or through a truck which is in front of you because it electronically connects to the other cars and gets that information in a fraction of a second. We just launched here at IAA our second generation fully integrated V2X uh, chipset, including uh, the related uh, software and middleware. Um, our first generation is on the road in the US. I think this is uh, pretty widely known that we are shipping this uh, to General Motors in the US. And the higher integration level, which you can see here, is currently being designed in for a couple of OEMs which will go on the road with the system in 2019. So this is now really turning into reality. We have these solutions, including cybersecurity, by the way, because in the end we talk about a Wi-Fi-like system which is open, including full cybersecurity. NXP is leveraging its leadership in cybersecurity from electronic government, like uh, electronic passports, electronic licenses, those cybersecurity solutions we ported into the V2X system to make it absolutely waterproof against hacking. Now, the second uh, certainly equally important example, and it is out on the road today, is clearly radar. But what is today on the road is long-range radars, which are used for the uh, electronic distance controlling cars. The next stage is going to be to have a much bigger array of very small radar sensors all around the car, which will do what we call imaging radar. So it will actually enable a completely digital image around the car, which comes from the sensors from many, many radar sensors. We talk between 10 and 20 radar sensors all around the car. That is enabled by making those radar sensors much smaller than they used to be. It couldn't be done in the past because they were too bulky and there was a lot of uh, electromagnetic interference. So putting them in, in very space-constrained areas of the car was simply not possible. What NXP has done as the first in the industry is integrating 77 gigahertz radar in CMOS, the front end and the processing part. And that makes it very, very small. We have the smallest module in the industry. And that lets realize the vision of having it all around the car, creating what we call imaging radar systems. Um, I wasn't on the right slide, ap apparently. Um, so let me uh, go. This is, this is what you should have seen, um, which is the um, the smallest, the smallest radar system I talked about. Actually, uh, one of the more prominent, very innovative customers we have using this is actually Google Waymo, which, um, which is, as you all know, pretty advanced in, uh, in fully self-driving cars. Now, taking it from here, um, the next one clearly is vision. So camera systems, which are a perfect complement to radar. Always think about Radar needs cameras, and cameras need radar. In radar, uh, we also have a new announcement, which we just made here yesterday uh, at the opening of IAA, which was about an open platform, which we announced together with Hella Aglaya. So the IP, which is running on our 32-bit uh, microprocessor, is actually coming from our partners, from Hella Aglaya which is an open industry platform. So compared to some well-known competitors in the industry, 
We offer this as an open system, allowing our customers, both the tier ones as well as the OEMs, to innovate and complement with their own algorithms. So our vision camera system is not a closed system, but it is a completely open system, allowing more innovation, collaboration between us and our customers. The last element is then the automation. So think about V2X sensing, think about radar sensing, think about vision camera sensing. Where it all comes together is a fusion engine in the middle, which actually starts to first model the digital image of the environment and then does what we call path planning. This is something which has a lot to do with artificial intelligence, much hyped, much talked about in the industry currently. We just um, also announced here a next generation platform, which is building on our blue box system, which again is an open platform uh, to let people develop on in a very collaborative way. We have a very firm belief that the complexity of the task of Vision Zero of fully automated cars is so big that it needs a lot of collaboration across the industry. So only open innovation, which allows for collaboration between industry players, we think is going to be the trick on the long run. Now, taking this all together, NXP is in a very, very powerful leadership position relative to this development. We also believe we have the best reasons to do this because, again, it is a very noble purpose to avoid road fatalities. We do it on the basis of the broadest and best portfolio in the semiconductor automotive industry, on the best understanding of the domain, of the specific, specific needs of automotive, including quality, and last but not least, based on a very high degree of innovation power. What makes the requirements of these systems different to the history is an enormous increase of innovation power requirements when it comes to bandwidth, to software, and to processing power. And all of those are greatly enabled by the merge of Freescan and NXP two years ago, and we'll see a further step up when NXP merges into Qualcomm, and we can tap into the very advanced processing and artificial intelligence performance of Qualcomm. And this is why we actually think the track shouldn't be really called from Vision Zero to reality, but making Vision Zero a reality. We clearly see a very straight path to do this by the availability of technology today. We just also believe it takes maybe a bit more courage across the industry to go ahead with new systems, implement them, which I personally also think should mean that in the next IAA or maybe the one after the next IAA, this new mobility world should not be here, but it should be right center stage. Because the future of that industry actually lies with the discussions, with the technology and with the innovation which we are doing right here. Thank you very much for your um, attendance, hopefully for your interest, and hopefully also for your interest into the next speakers, which will give their perspectives on the same topic, which is all about turning Vision Zero into reality. Thank you very much. Thank you.